you need to manifest from what you already have. You know, yeah. if you go in and you say, I want something, you know, you're basically saying it doesn't exist. It's not there right now versus, you know, I already have that and I'm just trying to bring it forth, you know, because it's maybe dormant at the moment. What do you think of when you hear the word manifestation? Does it sound like a ridiculous concept to you? Or do you think that it's just about people wishing upon a star that whatever they want is going to magically appear at their feet? Because if you do, you're not the only one. I used to feel that way too, until I really got curious about it and I started learning more about manifestation from some legitimate proponents of it. And I realized that the concepts of manifestation are very similar to the concepts of intentional living that I promote through the expectation gaps, which was a bit of a surprise to me at the time. So in the spirit of not settling for our understanding of what manifestation is, Today, we're going to discuss three manifestation truths in the hopes that maybe you'll find something in what we say that inspires you to not settle in your life. But before we do that, Adam is going to give the formal introduction to the show. Hello. Um, welcome, to, <laughs> welcome to Settling's Not an Option. I'm Adam Nebs, and I'm here with my co-host, Amanda Stanhope. This show is for anyone out there who feels like they've settled for an unfulfilling life whether you've settled in a relationship, the work that you do, or how you feel about yourself, we're here to tell you that settling's not an option. If you're liking the show, please follow us on Spotify, Amazon Music, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any feedback about the show, uh, want to recommend a topic or a guest, you can email us at cheers to not settling at gmail.com. Uh, finally, as well, if you feel so inclined, we do have a coffee account. Uh, we are aiming to buy some new audio equipment, which we have been for a while now. So yes. please feel free to chuck us some money um, <laughs> yeah. or anything to make us look more professional. Uh, that would be great. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> we were just talking before the show, like, we're just hoping to break even. We're not asking yeah. for a lot. We just want to break even. <laughs> it's, that's so. it. And I feel like it's an investment in the show. It's not for selfish reasons. We're not right. going to run out and, you know, buy a Lamborghini. No. Like we are just trying to make the show look a bit like nicer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you for that plug. Uh, and before we get too far into talking about manifestation, oh, I should first say, of course, that this whole episode is based on a post that I wrote for the expectation gaps. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that will be, you know, I'll get a link to that in the description. But so throughout this uh, episode, I will just be reading some, a little bit from what I wrote, just because it's easier than trying to rehash it. But we wanted to start out by just talking about some of the science behind manifestation, because there's actually a lot of neuroscience that's come out. And I mean, some of it started in the 70s. And so it's been around a while. But even more recently, I think there's been a lot of science to substantiate what the proponents of manifestation say. So it's not just like Adam always says, this airy fairy idea of manifestation, or I always think of like woo woo, or, you know, just these yeah. crazy people that are just trying to attract these things into their life without doing any work to get those mm. things. And that's not what it's about. The true proponents of manifestation don't think that's what it's about at all. But it's helpful, I think, to show what the science is saying before we start talking about manifestation. So I have a couple quotes here. And one, the first one is from Dr. Laura Boyd, and she's a neuroscientist. And she said that your brain is tremendously plastic and it's being shaped both structurally and functionally by everything you do, but also by everything you don't do. And then I have a quote from Dr. Karen Young, who is a psychologist. And she said that every thought, feeling, and action creates a pathway in your brain. Whenever you do something over and over, that pathway becomes stronger and stronger. The stronger the pathway, the easier that behavior, thought, or feeling will be. So I just kind of wanted to set that up as the idea that our brains are constantly changing. They are plastic. And just to keep that in our minds as we start talking about manifestation. And then one other thing that neuroscience has found is that when you visualize changes that you want to see in your life, your brain starts creating new pathways. And your mm. brain actually doesn't know at that point, of course, you know consciously that something didn't really happen. But these pathways in your brain are created nonetheless. And your brain 
the structure of your brain doesn't know that that event actually didn't happen. Mm. So neuroscience has proven that to be true because a lot of what manifestation is, is doing that, visualizing and mm. that kind of thing. And on what you're doing in this process is you are creating a new state of being. And that's a combination of how you're feeling and what you're thinking. And when your thoughts and feelings align, that's when you can manifest what you want. So that's just kind of the setup. And the three truths, I don't think you didn't say the three truths, did you? Uh, no, not yet. All of a sudden, I'm like, I don't think you said them, but um, <laughs> oh, shoot. And I lost my notes. Can you read off the three truths quickly? Yeah, sure. Hold on, I'll just bring up that page. Uh, so the three truths are you are seeking direction. You are trying to attract things that serve your true self and you are harnessing your awareness. Yeah. All right. So the first one we'll talk about is that you, when you are trying to manifest something, you're really just seeking direction and let's get a timer. So yep. are we thinking of, we're trying to keep these between 10 and 15 minutes, right? Yeah. That's what we're still thinking for this episode. Yep. <laughs> We've been mixing, mixing things up a little bit lately. So we have, with yeah, format. with the guests and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, all right. So I got my timer going. So again, I'm just going to read a little bit here. So this is from Gabrielle Bernstein and she calls herself a spiritual leader and she's pretty popular over here in the States. At least I don't know if she's, really yeah, popular I've seen her on Instagram. Yeah. But that, yeah. You've seen that name. Yep. And she says that manifesting what you want requires dwelling in a place of believing that you're already where you want to be. Then you allow the universe to catch up with you. You do this not to get something, but to claim the energy of what it is you want to feel. And then neuroscience suggests that you can rewire your brain, like I just talked about, through visualization, which will change your personality and ultimately your state of being. When you change your state of being, you realign your thoughts and feelings which sounds like another way of saying that you're claiming the energy of what it is you want to feel, which is what Gabrielle Bernstein calls it. And she also suggests that after you visualize, you have to trust the universe by recognizing when you are trying to control a situation in your life, asking your inner guide to reinterpret the situation for you and allowing the direction of your inner guide to come forward. So obviously I'll let you say whatever you wanna say, but I was really curious to know what you thought about the idea of just letting the universe catch up with you. Because I thought that was such a powerful thought. Yeah, I think that's a really good one. And I'd say both you and I probably do want to control our environments a bit too much sometimes. <laughs> yeah, of course. And so it's really hard, but it is funny, you know, like I guess Eckhart Tolle, you know, I'm always drawing on him and he's one that I listened to recently on the topic of manifesting, but there is some level where you just need to submit and mm -hmm. run with things. And I think a good measure of that is when things start to feel like you're really struggling, you know, like when you're really like pushing hard and things are just not happening, maybe you need to consider that you are being pulled, you know, you're naturally being pulled in a different direction and you're mm -hmm. resisting the path that's set before you, which is why it's so difficult. Well, right, but exactly somehow you've got in your mind, you know, no, I want this thing. And it's like, but the universe is telling you, yeah, okay, maybe you will get that thing. Maybe you won't, but just trust enough that you will be taken down where you need to. Yeah. And I mean, one thing, like I can say, this is a perfect example of something I've experienced recently. Right. Um, and it, and it kind of ties in with Eckhart Tolle's idea of uh, the three modalities of awakened doing, and particularly the, the one he talks about on enthusiasm. And he's okay. like, enthusiasm um, is where you've got kind of this universal energy behind you, this like big influx of creativity and energy that kind okay. of helps you down the path. So he describes it in a way like you feel like you're not going alone when you're doing something. You've got something behind you helping you. And he's like, but with enthusiasm, you can really slip into this egoic path quite easily okay. where things start to become a struggle. You know, and when that struggle starts to come in, <laughs> yeah. keep in mind that the egos come into play and maybe you're not as aligned with the universal energy as you could be. Right. And so I felt that recently, of course. I was going to say, um, I've never had that. I'm just laughing because <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I do that all the time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and and it's just like about something and then you try to control it too much. Yeah. Absolutely. It's yeah. just this obsession with control, which I'm sure all of us feel. Sure. Um, yeah. 
And that's one I just keep going back to because it just makes me laugh every time because I'm like, ah, oh, I forgot that. <laughs> like, how am I doing it... this again? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you're like, I know better than this. Right. But that's something I think. If it does start to feel really difficult because he's like, if it becomes a struggle and stressful and hard, yes, you could keep pushing. And yes, you probably will get to where you think you want to be eventually. Yeah. But it's not going to be as easy as just submitting and going, okay, maybe this isn't going to happen right now. I'll just run with it. You know? yeah, exactly. Mm. Well, and I think you might get, if you're not seeking direction, like she says, you might get where you want to be. But then when you get there, it's going to be hollow. Because yeah. yes. you're not going to have the feelings that go along with it. And I think maybe that's the visualization part of it is like you're visualizing where you want to be so much so that you can feel the feelings that go along with it. And then I think your feelings guide you toward that. And not that you necessarily even end up where you, not exactly what you visualized, but I think your feelings, if you are start listening to your feelings a little more instead of just your thoughts in that process, it's going to get you to where you need to be mm. instead of where maybe where you wanted to be or where you want to be will change over time. That visualization might change yeah. over time because you're going to start feeling some of the feelings that go along with, oh, maybe I thought I really wanted that promotion. Okay. Now, if I picture myself getting this promotion, all of a sudden I'm feeling stressed and I feel like I don't have enough time with my family and all this stuff. And you feel that feeling and now maybe your visualization changes. Wow, that's that's a good way of looking so at it. I'm thinking, yeah, I just thought of that. See, I'm just going to jot that down. That's just some Amanda wisdom. I've learned. <laughs> no, it just came to me because the universe... I've just learned over our time together. When you drop some of these, I've got to jot them down. <laughs> you, you realize you can always come back to the video, right? But... Yeah, well, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I appreciate that. But I mean, that is, I guess, that's the whole point of letting the universe kind of take control or whoever if you want to call it god or whatever you want to call it i've got a i've got a question for you now i just yeah, thought about yeah. do you think humanity like doesn't trust maybe that there? are well firstly that humanity doesn't believe there's a higher power maybe dictating things yes and secondly that if people do think there's a higher power running things that they don't trust that higher power to get, get it right. right. Like it's, it's what a, what an arrogant way of living, you know, yeah. um, right. even for us in which we think that we need to, that we know better maybe than what's mm -hmm. set before us. Like I know mm -hmm. some people might say like, don't tell me like it's all carved out for me and that I have to just submit to whatever's happening. Um, but at the same time, it's arrogant to believe that we have to take complete control of everything, isn't it? Of course. Hmm. Well, and I think that people want to believe that there is a higher power that's, I don't know, control is the right word, but there's a higher power influencing everything. Yeah. And that everything's working together in a certain way for a reason. And I think people want to believe that, but I don't think they really do. Oh, I'm not, yeah. There are some people, but. The majority, I think, they want to believe it. And I think that's why people go to church and things, because they want to believe it. But deep down, mm. do they really believe it? Mm. <laughs> because yeah. if they really believed it, they wouldn't be living the way that they're living. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. it's really the way they live is very contradictory to having that belief that God is going to take care of everything. And it's not even that, because I heard, you know, now it might have been Don Dapani, which is one, another person we're going to talk about coming up here mm. i think it might have been him he was talking one time about how manifestation is not about just sitting back like hoping for something and just sitting back and waiting for it to come you still have to mm. do the work yeah <laughs> and yeah. i guess that goes with you know if you are someone who believes in god or higher power of some sort well, he gave us all these tools to use for a reason. Like he gave us this body. He gave us this mind for a reason. He didn't give yeah. it to us to just sit here and wait for him to bestow things on us. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. I'll help you, but you have to kind of come along for the ride here. Like, yes. <laughs> I'll give yeah. you the tools you need, but you have to do something with them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's the part maybe that people forget about sometimes. Yes. Is that you and still have to take the responsibility. Yeah, I think maybe that's what's been attached to manifesting is the idea, as you yes. said, wishing on a star 
and all of a sudden all these things just pop up. Oh, I've got a million dollars and blah, blah, blah. But no, like it does, it's more about clarifying things. And I guess maybe we'll, we'll probably discuss it more like when we get to the neuroscience part of it. But I guess from like a neuroscience perspective, it's like your brain has so much to process every yeah. day. It can't process everything. It's just helping your brain going, hey, buddy, I know you're really struggling with all this stuff you're processing. Hey, buddy. You know? <laughs> um, so how about we just really focus in on these couple of things sure. and then that way you, you know where to go because I think your brain's sitting there, this amazing machine, I guess, yeah. that is just we just don't use it properly. Like True. we just kind of um, we somehow expect it to do what we want when we don't really guide it to do what we want right <laughs> so. well and i'm thinking of it because okay so i had problems with my computer again today you know me yep. my computer lately <laughs> you've been having a few computer <laughs> i know so i'm just thinking of this it's like a computer where your computer is doing something in the background yeah and you don't know what it's doing and you just want to yep. get on to the next thing so you're hitting buttons and you're trying to <laughs> control out delete and all this stuff and that just screws it up even more. And it just makes it take even longer. So it's kind of the thing where your brain's working in the background and it knows what it's kind of doing its thing. And then you get in the way and try to <laughs> try to tell yes. what it's supposed to do instead of just listening. Um, or like I said, like I already said, but I'd come back to it one more time, is it's that intertwining of the thoughts and feelings. Because yes. too often we're just very cerebral and we're just very, when well, that's where the control comes in because that's all in your head. Yeah. That's not your heart. Your heart doesn't try to control things. No. Your heart yeah. just goes with the flow and does what feels good <laughs> to the heart. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, that's probably the biggest part of it. But, all right. Yeah. Are we good with that one? Should we move on? I think we're good with that one. Yep. Okay. Let me reset my timer here. All right. So, the second truth is that when you are manifesting, what you're really trying... Oh. I, yeah, I don't have this word in the same way. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, That's okay. bear, bear with me, people. No, but you're, you're really trying to attract what you need, not what you want when you're manifesting. Mm. So this thought came from Dr. Wayne Dyer, and he was a spiritual teacher. And he I heard him speak about the art of manifestation, and he gave this quote. And it was, I will attract into my life what I am, not what I want. In his opinion, this is the true purpose of manifestation. That's what really changed my perspective. I was under the impression, based on the proliferation of information I see online, that manifestation is about wishing for things you wanted, money, careers, love, interests, etc. But after listening to Dr. Dyer, as well as a few other proponents of manifesting, I now understand that it's really about finding who you really are, figuring out what you need in this life, figuring out what your natural gifts are so that you can use them to meet those needs and being mm. grateful for all that you have, which will curtail your wants. So that was his take on it. And that's really powerful too. And we'll get your thoughts on that about that you're trying to attract what you need, not what you want. And you're trying mm. to attract what's going to make you your true self, not mm. what you think you want. I think that's interesting as well yeah. because, because yeah, I guess as well, like people would think, okay, so manifesting is about sitting down and saying, I want a, I want a romantic partner or I want that promotion at work or whatever it is. Um, and that's just like, just such a shallow view of manifestation. Yeah. Um, but I think it is, it is like, it's already within you. Cause this is what I like about totally. This is like, he, he had a recent kind of bunch of free, um videos where he talks oh, about manifesting okay. yeah and he's like you need to manifest from what you already have you know yeah. if you go in and you say i want something you know you're basically saying it doesn't exist it's not there right now versus you know i already have that and i'm just trying to bring it forth you know because it's maybe dormant at the moment and that's so true because he's like, so people really manifest in the wrong way. They're already right. trying to manifest something, but, but coming from a place of lack versus a place true. of I've already got it. And it's so okay. true. You yeah, can yeah. think about it through so many different lenses, right? Which, as you say, looking at the strengths within yourself, 
So say you want to, I don't know, if you say you really do want to look at a promotion, it's like, well, do you think you have it inside you already to be, I don't know, a manager or something mm. or whatever it is? It, mm. it needs to already exist in you and then you bring it forth as opposed to trying to just pluck something out Yeah. that really, if you think about it, you don't need, you don't want, and you shouldn't get maybe. Right. And doesn't serve your true self. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think when you do come from it, I think if you come from it, from a place of your true self and that you've really, I'll use my term that you've really deliberately thought about it, yes. about whether that will just stay with the promotion, like whether this promotion is in alignment with your values, if it's going to serve some purpose in your life to make you a better person somehow in or even to serve others in a better way, maybe. If you're coming into it, at it from a place like that, even though you maybe don't have the skills yet to be that manager or whatever you're being promoted to, maybe you don't have the skills yet, but you'll figure out a way to get those skills. And you'll figure yeah. out a way to get those skills pretty quickly because you're coming from it, coming at it from a pure place. Mm. I think because when you're coming at it not from a pure place, you're gonna be. I think you're gonna have a much harder time because all of a sudden you're gonna get there. You're gonna figure out you don't have the skills, and <laughs> it's not something you really wanted to do. And you're just gonna be so overwhelmed that yeah, you're not going to get those skills that you needed. Yeah. To really perform that job because that's not what you really wanted to begin with. <laughs> I think you've hit the nail on the head and that's where manifesting and deliberate thinking really coincide yeah, right. because you do need to think about things because, well, yeah, you know, like, cause too often I think we just do things and we've said that before, you know, we just run blind blindly forward, you know, hoping that we find something that'll yeah. stick or whatever, right. but we don't sit down and actually go, what do I want? Do I want it but, to stick? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, and that's why people get something like a promotion and they go, ah, oh, I didn't really think this through. I actually hate this. Yes. Cause we've like, both been there. We have. Yeah. yeah. Where you end up, you're climbing the ladder and this just is just the easiest example is to talk yeah. about promotion, but where you're kind of climbing the ladder and then you get this title and you're like, I don't, yeah, really? This is what I was working for? <laughs> Not what? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I think just take a step back and say with manifesting, right? So like I might later tell tell you kind of my story about like something I manifested, which That'd kind of awesome. scared me a little bit. Um, but lately, right, with the – I've had some frustrations, which I've well, talked to Amanda about. you just have to tell me. I, I, will, I will definitely have to tell you the story. Okay. Um, but – like I've had some frustrations recently, which I felt are just insignificant frustrations. So in a way it's been like quite good to be like, cool. Like if this is what I'm getting annoyed about in my life right now, things are going pretty well. Yeah. But in the back of my mind, I've been going, do I try and manifest these things that I may be feeling I'm lacking or I don't have right now? And I can't bring myself to do it because yeah. I realize how shallow those things are. Like I'm just kind of like, I'm very happy with what I've got right now. Life is going pretty well. And I feel there is a level of where the universe is kind of guiding me along the path mm -hmm. that I need to go down. Right. And I'm doing the control thing. I'm trying to resist where I'm going. And so I'm not going to use something as powerful as manifesting because I think it is very, very powerful once you understand it. Sure. Don't use that unless you deliberately think about what do I want? Where do I want to go? Yeah. Um, so like, my example, I guess, was when I was, <laughs> I haven't told you this. So when I was, uh, I was previously in a rental property, which yeah. um, I needed to break my lease early so I could move in with my girlfriend. And the rent at this place was really high. Um, I was having a really difficult time with the, um, the real estate agent. She was yeah. very difficult to get along with despite my best efforts um, and just the place was not, despite the fact that in Hobart, where I live, the rental market is going crazy. Like okay. basically rental properties are being sucked up in about two seconds. Okay. Yet this place wasn't. Really? And it meant that I, yeah, it was just mad because, yeah. you know, it, it just meant that I had to keep paying like very high rent when, you know, the new place that I'm in, I don't have to pay as much. And it was frustrating me. 
So I manifested, I sat down and I really focused my intentions and visualized what happened, you know, okay. visualized my, uh, visualized this real estate agent, um, basically meeting with some new tenants okay. who would take the lease. Yeah. And I literally went down to the very fine tuned nature of the time in which this would happen, really? the people that would be there, how the interaction would unfold. Um, and it involved, a, 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 you know, people might be like, geez, okay, this is a bit full on. But I sat down and I wrote out what I wanted from that situation. Okay. I, I spoke it aloud. I visualized it and it came true. It that literally unfolded. Nice. Yeah. And it was in despite, you know, and for me, what it made me think about with um, manifesting is it's about creating space. You know, if we think about yep. we're in the quantum realm, you know, which we've talked to a few people about the quantum realm, which is this like vast space full of energy, you know, where things can happen. It's about honing all of that energy in and creating more space for something to happen. And, True. Okay. you know, because yeah. I think there is, you know, everything is in flux right now. So it is trying to just say to the universe, hey, I'm trying to just create space here. Yeah. So when that happened, it actually freaked me out because I was <laughs> like. <laughs> now, not the time. Did it come down to the time? It, 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 yes, it pretty much. It was pretty close. It, it literally unfolded very close to how I wanted it to. That is, that's creepy because I can see it unfold. Well, yeah, I can see it happening, but maybe like not exactly the same way. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure like, I'm sure like people will be like, yeah, but is that the case? Like blah, blah, blah. But for me, it just demonstrated, I think there is some power there. And mm -hmm. I think you need to be aware that when you open up the space to, to be created and you, you basically call on the universe, that's what I think you're doing. That's very powerful and you shouldn't abuse it. That's why now if I'm feeling a little bit like frustrated about something, which, which really is insignificant, I'm yeah. like, I'm not going to use like manifesting, you know, in that sense, I guess. Um, right. Right. Yeah. So right. there's my little story. No, that's really <laughs> awesome. But I'm almost thinking too, it's like you got out of the universe's way and the universe rewarded you for that. Mm. Almost like it's like, yes. thank you for... <laughs> allowing yes. me to do my job <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm gonna show exactly. you that i am listening so maybe you'll let me do my job more often <laughs> yeah yeah and when you when you realize the power there yeah i think it, you know you you realize how important it is not to abuse it and that you need to use it for what's important as you said before something that will be good for other people not just for yourself which is why you wouldn't manifest I want a million dollars. I want oh, to win right. the lotto. Like, no, don't right. do that. Things like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is a lot of what you see. Like, yeah. When I see manifestation posts and stuff, it's like, manifest a thousand dollars today. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> okay, whatever. I mean, you probably could because you, part of it too is I think you're just opening yourself up to see opportunities that maybe you wouldn't have seen before. Yes. So maybe you would have got that thousand dollars either way. But it's just, yeah. or you could have, the opportunity was there. It's just, now you're actually seeing the opportunity. And I think that is a part of it too. But yeah, like you said, there's pro there's got to be something even more powerful than that. Yeah. And it reminds me because I'm reading this book right now. It's called The War of The War of Art. Yes, I always want to say it backwards. The War of Art. It's yep. by Stephen, and I can't think of his last name. But anyway, it's a pretty powerful book. And he the part I was just reading today was talking about muses and because it's I mean it's a book aimed at artists obviously and so it was talking about muses and how he believes there are angels around us and mu where you want to call an angel or a muse yeah. and they're always trying to tell us something and he but we not many very many people listen and he was talking about like Beethoven's Fifth Symphony and how yeah. He pictures like a muse was probably humming those notes into so many people's ears and nobody mm. was listening until finally one day that muse came to Beethoven and hummed those chords or whatever. And yep. now suddenly you have Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. And yeah. I thought that's a really cool way to think of things is that, yeah, yeah there are, this is this outside force, whatever you want to call it, 
that's trying to help us along and trying to give us clues and we just have to listen to it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, I like yeah, I thought that was really cool. And I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm going to have find a way to bring this up tonight because it really yeah. has a lot. It's similar to manifesting. Yes, yeah, I think so. The yeah. same kind of idea, but. Mm. All right, so we're we good with that one. Move on. Point to number three. One. Yep. All right. Reset the timer again. Yep. All righty. So last but not least, we have manifestation truth number three which is when you're manifesting you're harnessing your awareness so this one's pretty cool too mm. so this came from don Dapani, who i mentioned before and don Dapani is a hindu priest and he said where awareness goes energy flows and he presents this powerful analogy he says energy is like rain when rain falls from the sky it doesn't discriminate it waters the flowers and weeds equally the same is true of our energy we have a finite amount of energy and it will flow toward whatever our awareness is focused on. If our awareness is focused on fruitful thoughts, our energy will continue to feed those thoughts and positive things will start happening in your life. And of course, the opposite is also true. And this is where meditation comes into play. Meditation is a practice that will condition your brain and change the focus of your thoughts and emotions, or in other words, meditation will change the focus of your awareness. You can focus your awareness toward what you want to attract in your life, which will change your perception of the world, and you will start to recognize opportunities that will allow you to manifest what you want. And when your thoughts and feelings, we talked about this a little bit before, but when your thoughts and feelings are aligned within this new state of being, you can manifest what you want because that is where your energy will be flowing. So yeah, another powerful message there. And I yes. guess have you found, maybe you have found that to be true based on <laughs> your the story that you just shared like that's where all your energy was kind of going at that time because especially like yeah. you talked about you're visualizing it you're writing it down you said it out loud that's a lot of energy that is a lot of energy yeah <laughs> so. and and that's it i think it is what what's useful too and it kind of ties back to what we were talking about with mindful practice yeah is understand where all the energy is going i love that analogy from from um Don Dapani, is it? I think yep. that's how you say it. Yeah, Don yep. Dapani. We'll run with that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's so true because you think of how much stuff that's happening in the world, like in your life right now, right. and energy is going to all of those areas. But you're really, yeah, you're in the garden. You're choosing what's going to get the most kind of yeah. nourishment, right? Which is why mindfulness probably works because it is about sitting there and going, okay. Let's maybe have a moment to just step back and look at what's happening and where, I don't know, maybe even we think about it through another analogy, you know, like a computer server or whatever, you know, and you're looking at all the processing and the processing's all going to the one big program and you're like, I don't want it going there. That's not working for me. <laughs> oh, true. You know, That's you true. You disconnect that. Yeah. yeah and then yeah. you start funneling it into other things. Um, and I think a good one would like that I've tried to do re like recently is, um, tried to visualize, um, you know, if I'm feeling a little bit like weighed down by things, sure. I will sit and think, okay, visualize myself wearing a backpack and be like, I'm now going to open my backpack and look at what's in there. Okay. And usually there's a lot of stuff in there. I'm like, yeah. wow, I didn't realize it was so bloody full. And then, you know, like you'll look at it and be like, all right, let's take some of these things out. Do I need to be looking at this thing today? Well, no, not really. It's not serving yeah. me. And slowly start to visualize taking those things out of your backpack. That's a good and, idea. And it's, it worked. Like, I, it was, it just came to me and it started to work. And I realized, wow, I probably need to unpack my bag every day. <laughs> unpack my <laughs> you know, bag. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in there. But remove it. And then it almost feels like things are a bit easier. And I think that's it. There's so much that we accumulate day on day, like, you know, day in, day out. Just take some of that away so that you can focus on the things that are important to you each day. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's funny you say that because there is some psychology behind that. Mm. Because when I was seeing a counselor a while ago, she actually told me to do that. Literally, though, she said to get a little bag and put rocks and like right on a rock like right on it, what the worry was or whatever, and carry these uh -huh. rocks around with me all day. Yep. I did not yep. do it. 
because like she wanted me to take it to work and she's like you don't leave that bag that bag goes with you if you go to the copy machine the bag goes with you and I just couldn't bring myself to do that no. so <laughs> I did not do that so people you can just visualize it because as yeah. we already learned that you will create a new pathway in your brain and your brain doesn't well say that it didn't happen <laughs> so you can just visualize it if she would have told me that I might have done it <laughs> but as you were saying that I'm like oh my gosh she told me to do that mm. and I guess I did kind of um visualize it then because mm. I wasn't going to carry this bag of rocks around at work <laughs> I think I, might have I really, it. I, I really I wish it around you had. my apartment a little bit, maybe. I think I might have done it at home. <laughs> I, I shouldn't laugh, but it is really funny to think you'd be walking to like the coffee machine with this big bag, and your colleagues being like, "What are you doing? <laughs> oh, um, I'm just, I'm just carrying around this bag, you know. I've got stuff in it." But I think that was kind of the point too, is that you would be embarrassed by it and like not necessarily just even embarrassed but you will become so aware of it well and mm. that would produce the energy right because now people yeah. are asking you about it mm. and now your energy is flowing more toward that you're very aware that you're carrying these worries around for no reason and you don't want people to be asking about them anymore so you need to just yeah. let them go <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so i guess that was part of it but um the other thing i was just going to mention too is as far as the energy goes I mean, I've just found this to be so true in my life because so many things, I've just always had a pretty positive energy overall. I don't know. I was just born that way, I think. And I mean, yeah. some, I think some people are just fortunate enough to be born that way and some people aren't and they have to really work at it. But I have, and I can just say that there have been so many things that have happened in my life that have just been so completely unexpected like so good for me in the long run that I've never would have known. And I really do believe that it's all because I always do keep a positive energy over time. Of course, I have bad days. Sometimes mm. I have bad weeks. Sometimes, you know, whatever. I mean, there's times, but even through those times, I always have this positive. Even when I was going through the worst time in my life to date, I had in the back of my head, I know I'm going to be better when this is done. Mm. I still always had that. And it's just, mm. that is just so powerful. And I think people really underestimate the power of that because two mm. people can go into the same situation. Say you get some bad news from your doctor about something. And, you know, two people can go into the same situation and one is just positive about it and going to do whatever they can to make the situation better and just make the most of it, whatever they've been dealt. And then the other person comes out just completely downtrodden and completely defeated and completely yep. out, feeling out of control and like they're, you know, they just lost their whole life or whatever. And, you know, the first person is going to recover from whatever that illness is a lot more quickly mm. than the other person. Yes. And that's just, I mean, I can't say that it happens 100% of the time, but it does happen a lot. Or you even hear people like going in remission from cancer. Yep. Well, that's another thing I was reading about today. There was this guy, um, and of course, I don't remember his name, but he yep. works with people. He's like a therapist specifically for people with cancer. Mm -hmm. And how did that work? I'm trying to remember what he was doing with them. And now, shoot, I can't remember. But the point is, there was some kind of positivity type practice he was doing with them. And these people started to go into remission. And these were people with terminal illness or terminal yep. cancer mm. and they start going to remission so it's just i mean <laughs> our thoughts yeah. are so much more powerful than we think they are <laughs> yes i think so and you know i'm sure some people could choose to like i don't know take offense and get frustrated by um the idea of you know if i think positively i'll i'll, I'll get better and stuff right. but like so you know i'll just always put a caveat there because i know some people might not be ready to hear that but it is true. There's, there is yeah. peer-reviewed research to show that, you know, if you keep, a, you know, a positive headspace, and Joe Dispenza talks about all the, uh, that all the time, yeah. you know, that he's had people in, like, I think he said, like, stage four cancer, which I'm pretty sure is that terminal stage, right. yeah, um, that's, that's that have really come strange. out. Yeah. Yeah, they've, they've come out of it. You know, so that's the thing, I think, um, is, and I wrote that down, you know, as things unfold, keep a positive mindset. And it's, it's a good one to have, mm -hmm. you know, it's, 
being able to say, have, be having a rough day and to be able to say, you know, this is going to pass. It always passes. I have a hundred percent strike rate of these things True. passing. <laughs> True. And usually yeah. then I feel so much better because, you know, I've had a maybe, I don't know, a day of just difficulty, but now I'm feeling so much better probably because I've had that day of difficulty, you know, yeah. like I, I can enjoy the moment a bit more, right. but, but something I was, I was thinking about uh, and I'd written down was around, and this is kind of to, more to the point of the neuroscience part, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Understanding like cognitive and confirmation biases. Ah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Because so like, I think I talked to you a little bit about this maybe, um, or maybe another friend, but it was, I, I started to go for walks. Right. And yeah. I'd gone for a couple of walks and noticed people uh, not looking up when they walk past me or some people, yeah, some people not saying hello or whatever. Now, what happened is I was going to write a post, a LinkedIn post, and I decided not to do it because I was going to write, you know, like, why is the world so indifferent? Like, you know, people (laughs) aren't looking at each other and like even taking the time to recognize each other and Right. Like, how frustrating is this? Like, is it a generational thing? Is it a cultural thing? What is it? But then I was like, well, how much of this is down to my own confirmation bias? How much hmm. have I said to my brain, the world is indifferent. So now let's find examples to confirm my bias. Yeah. And that's yeah. what happens. I mean, you know, and so that's why you've got to be aware of that to say, all right, I'm probably looking for things. I'm telling my brain to look for those yeah. scenarios. But how many people on the walk actually looked at me and smiled or whatever it is? And I didn't see them because right. I, I told my brain, block those out because we're going to confirm that this is the way of the world. Right. So be aware of that. And then I went for a walk the next day. And funnily enough, everyone on that walk, like it just felt like the universe being like, everyone on that walk smiled or said hello. Yeah. Even people that I did not expect to, like younger people or people with headphones in looked yeah. at me and smiled and that's i thought impressive because a lot of times the people with the headphones in there they got those i know they are, they're the hardest hardest <laughs> yeah. people right right so just being aware of that you know if you are seeing the world in a certain way and you know another concept that a friend told me about was frequent the frequency illusion okay which is the the concept of you see something and then you start to see it more and more often, you know? Yeah, sure. So yeah. I, I see a truck, I'll start to see more of those trucks around, whatever. Yeah. So I these are all experienced that. Yeah. We have. Yeah. So it's just be aware that, you know, if you're seeing things, okay, maybe again, think a bit more deliberately about, are you seeing those things? Cause you've told your brain to, right. to see them, you know, and how can you maybe undo that? Because yeah. No, it's I damaging. love that because that's so true. That confirmation bias. I mean, that's a big, well, that is where I guess that it's where your awareness goes, energy flows. So there you go. Yes. <laughs> your awareness yes. is focused on confirming your own thoughts. And, st- yeah. and we all do that. And there's so much research too. And of course, you know, I'm not one to pull all these stats out of my head, but there's a lot of research to the show how much more likely our brain is to jump to a negative thought than a positive thought mm. and we're just wired that way for and it, maybe it's a yeah. survival thing i believe it probably is a survival thing that our brains just spot negative things think of negative things remember negative things <laughs> much more easily than positive things yes and so i think that is partly why it is so hard for everybody and i think it's a good to know that and accept that about yourself Because I think also, too, you don't want to force yourself to be positive. Well, I mean, some people would say to force yourself. But I guess what I'm saying is that you need to allow yourself to process all your feelings. Yeah. So you still have to process your bad feelings, if you want to call them that, and your negative feelings and accept them. But in doing so, I think you get back to the positive much more, much sooner. Yes than yeah. if you're trying to repress those negative feelings. Yeah, and I think you said it before with one of the quotes, you know, around, like, visualize something and let the universe catch up. Right. You know, 
because yeah your brain doesn't know that that thing hasn't happened maybe it just needs a bit of a push to say okay this is where we're going um i'll just give you some time to catch up so you know there is some merits in that yeah hmm. all right so i think we're good we're i think that's the three points here. yep 24 seconds look at that <laughs> look at that on fire <laughs> <laughs> so all right any last thoughts before i do the conclusion uh just that, you know, I know that manifesting looks or may sound on the face of it a little bit woo-woo, but, you know, if you're really somebody who needs the facts and you need the science, yeah, the science and the facts are there. So have a look at it. Um, otherwise, you know, if you don't need that, maybe just look at some spiritual gurus. There's enough of them out there. Um, but just be mindful as well that there probably are some that are a little bit woo woo. You just got to. Well, and there's a lot of misleading ones like we talked about. The ones that say, yes. picture $5,000 and it's going to show up in your mailbox or something. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, it's like, okay, I might not trust, put my trust in <laughs> those types yes. of things. But, yeah. <laughs> or, I mean, just try it. I guess that's what I would leave people with is, you know, if you're talking about visualization or bringing awareness to your, energy or whatever or trying to attract what you need rather than what you want why not try it it's not going to hurt to try mm -hmm. <laughs> just give it a shot yeah. if it doesn't yeah. work it doesn't work if it does yep. it's awesome <laughs> but it's like yep. you're not going to lose anything by trying it <laughs> so why not right <laughs> yes yeah so let's we'll say stay curious and don't settle and just try yes. it <laughs> There. We'll work, we'll, uh, work, uh, work both of the slogans in. <laughs> yeah, double plug, double plug. That's right. All right. So if you made it this far in the program, we thank you so much for watching. And we're really trying to get the messages out here. So we appreciate if you can help us out with the algorithm gods and share, comment, like, subscribe. You know all the things that you need to do um, <laughs> to help the algorithm <laughs> gods notice us. You can, as Adam said at the beginning, um, reach us at cheers to not settling at gmail.com. And of course, head on over to coffee where you can give us as little as a dollar to help us keep this thing going and get some equipment and all those good things. So until next time, we will say cheers to not settling. Cheers to not settling. <laughs> Bye. Take care. <laughs>